Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, what I would say the third series of our Racial Equity and Social Impact Leadership Session, Advancing Female Leaders, The Power of Mentorship by Center State CEO. Uh, my name is Lizette Lewis, and I am the Racial Equity and Social Impact Coordinator at Center State CEO. And I am so excited for today's panel featuring a dynamic slate of women leaders. Um, and I just want to take a few minutes to first thank uh, Berkshire Bank for uh, our sponsorship with them. And also thank you all for attending today's panel. And I'll have Angela Dixon, who is uh, the Senior Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer of Berkshire Bank say a few words. Good morning, everyone. So nice to see you all this morning and be here with you on this panel discussion. We are super excited to sponsor today's event. I'm also honored to be on today's panel discussing advancing female leaders. As was mentioned, I serve as the Chief Diversity Officer for Berkshire Bank. And throughout my career, my career I have focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as talent management. At Berkshire Bank, I work very closely with executive management to create and cultivate initiatives that align with our business strategies. Our goal is to expand opportunities for diverse communities with measurable impact. For those not familiar with Berkshire Bank, I would like to share who we are and what we stand for. At Berkshire, we're committed to supporting partners like Center State Corporation for Economic Opportunity who like us understand that our most important investment is the one we make in each other. And that is only through lifting each other up that we can make a better future together. To deliver on that vision, Berkshire is on his own journey to ensure that our workforce reflects the communities in which we operate. That is employees feel that they are valued and can reach their full potential. Core to our business is improving the access and affordability of financial solutions to support economic growth of underrepresented populations and communities. Berkshire Bank has made it a priority to be the leading socially responsible community bank. Last year, we announced an exciting new FinTech partnership that allows us to use artificial intelligence to deliver more inclusive lending options for consumers by going beyond that FICO score. The result is more accessible and more affordable credit that unlocks upward mobility and ensures our neighbors and communities continue to thrive. For more than 175 years, Berkshire has been there to help its customers and communities. For instance, we are already reinvesting in our communities at a rate of nearly 70% higher than the industry average. We are committed to lending and investing $5 billion over the next three years to help transform local communities. This is an increase of about 60%. We call it our best community comeback, and it focuses on four key areas, fueling small businesses, community financing and philanthropy, financial access and empowerment, and funding environmental sustainability. And during the fourth quarter of 2021, the bank provided nearly $600,000 to support local nonprofit organizations, more than 87. We believe every community deserves a comeback. And I'm so honored and privileged to be a part of this panel discussion today as we look toward further advancing female leaders, particularly women in financial fields. Thank you. Thank you, Angela, and good morning to everyone. I'm Manifa Wilcox, the VP of Human Resources for Center State CEO. I am excited to be here today and excited to have you all a part of this conversation as we focus this session on the experiences of leadership of female leaders in the corporate world challenges we face as women and why mentorship is a key, um, uh, let me see, it's key to our growth. I'll put it that way. Um, what's important about it, why and how we can use it to our advantage and um, give everyone here an opportunity to hear from three dynamic women. 
Today, we have Aaron Horn McKinney, who is Executive Vice President of Innovation and Strategy at, at Associations for Enterprise Opportunity. You just heard from Angela Dixon, who is a Senior VP and Chief Diversity Officer at Berkshire Bank. And we have Dana Sanders, the owner of Phil Financial Incorporated. Um, and you will see flashing up their bios that you can read on your own. I don't wanna take the time to read for you all, but would now like to turn this opportunity over, or take the opportunity to turn this over to the three women and hear what they have to say um, and hear their experiences and learn from them about the importance of mentorship. So thank you all. Ladies, if you all could please um, join the conversation and just be engaged. But Erin, can you tell us um, what your work is and um, about you and how mentorship has played a role in your life? And Dana and Angela, please jump in and let's keep this conversation going. Sure, thank you so much, Monifa. So uh, I work for Association for Opportunity, also known as AEO. AEO is the trade association for small businesses, uh, community development financial institutions, which are micro lenders, community banks, essentially, and uh, financial institutions that support small business. Um, so we're based in DC and we help push things along on the hill to make sure there are phenomenal policies that support uh, small businesses. And we, of course, run a number of programs ourselves to support our membership. Uh, so for example, one of the things that many people might be familiar with is um, after the death of George Floyd, when a lot of uh, uh, corporate and social responsibility commitments were made uh, by companies, including PayPal, uh, PayPal put out grants for small businesses, uh, black owned small businesses, that that grant program was ran through uh, and ran by AEO. Um, and actually just last week, we had another program that we launched uh, to support black businesses, another grant program uh, with Capital One. So those are just some of the things that we do on a professional level. Um, I lead innovation uh, and strategy for AEO. So the, the grant programs, as well as the, the innovative programs that we do with our membership and a lot of business development uh, work as well and uh, a newly launched innovation studio where we support and invest in startups that are uh, helping the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So that's what I do for a living, but I'm also a serial entrepreneur and specifically a serial tech entrepreneur. I'm the founder also of Black Female Founders, which is a global membership organization for Black female founders through, throughout the Black diaspora, specifically in tech. Uh, we were recently acquired by Black Women Talk Tech, uh, which was announced earlier this year. And as it relates to mentorship, Mentorship is literally, I think, the thing that has led to the most success in my life, uh, because I don't, um, I don't think I'd be where I was if it wasn't for mentors being references for me, speaking for me in rooms that I wasn't in, uh, and I am somebody who wholeheartedly believes in mentorship, and that is not just someone who is older than you. It can be somebody younger than you. It can be a woman or a man. It can be really. I surround myself in not just professionally, but even personally with people that I think carry uh, characteristics or um, some type of skill set that I'd like to learn more about. And I put them in what I call my kitchen cabinet. And so, and I'm happy to ask people to be my mentor in a heartbeat. That's, um, and I think just having those relationships where you're being informed by somebody to give you advice or help shape your thinking uh, really has been so critical to my success. Um, I and I honestly would say there's not one role I've ever had in my life that was not either a mentor was a reference for me for that role or a mentor wasn't the person that actually um, recommended me for that role before I even knew it existed. Um, so that's how important it is to me. And I also, with that, 
try to give back as a mentor. So I, I have a lot of mentees uh, that I work with and, you know, including uh, the staff of the organizations that I lead. Um, I think it's something that um, I'm very proud of that every organization I've worked with, there's so many individuals there who come to me on their own and ask for me to mentor them and stay in touch with me even as I move on to uh, new roles and new adventures. Thanks, Aaron. So Aaron, you spoke about your kitchen cabinet. Can you tell us what that means for you? What does, what's a kitchen cabinet of, of, of information? So it's a term uh, used to refer to your, your advisors, if you will, right? Those that you lean on in those moments. So whenever I have big decisions, I call my kitchen cabinet, right? I call the people that my my board of advisors. So, you know, when we talk about business, you have board of advisors or an advisory board. Um, those are what my mentors are to me. So if I'm thinking about a job change or if I'm thinking about, I'm struggling with a an obstacle uh, on a job uh, or even as a wife, mother, woman, you know, there are people that I call on to try to figure things out, who I trust their guidance and their wisdom. Um, either they've been there before, been through that situation, or I've navigated uh, the rough waters and really they did that with grace. They did it in a way that I feel like there's something to learn. And so, you know, just as, a, as an example, um, while I'm, I'm here right now uh, at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas, which is a uh, international uh, uh, tech, music, film uh, festival conference. And, uh, even though it was just a short period of time, I met with a, a mentor of mine who's out of DC because I don't live in DC anymore, who was here for the conference and was talking about some, you know, some decisions that I'm making. Um, and one of the, and we met, uh, he had a dinner and I had a dinner, but we still caught up for, for just a little bit afterward. And one of the two things that he shared with me that I thought were really powerful is one, he said, you know, whenever you're making a transition, uh, you want to do, he, he recommended some places that he personally goes where he can go like meditate for a week and just like clear his mind and kind of cleanse. Um, and it was something I hadn't really, more than just going to a spa, but just really like you do yoga every day. And so he was recommending some retreats, which I thought was a really great idea. And I had never done that before. And then he also recommended uh, two books, uh, one that was about uh, work transitions and one that was about personal transitions. And so that feedback and that information, you know, just having somebody that you can talk to who is a, a, a senior leader as well, he's been there and he's done that, um, is very powerful. But one of the things I will say, because I'm talking about him, right, is that what I've noticed through the years is that a lot of my mentors have been men. And one of the things that, um, you know, I've really tried to insert is, is female mentors, which oftentimes just because the, the, the industries that I, that I've been in have been very male dominated and so industry. So it has always been, uh, really difficult to find women in those spaces, but it's something I've been very intentional about and trying to be a, a, a good female leader and mentor to others as well. Awesome. Yeah, I, I could see, depending on the professional arena you're in, how it would be difficult. Um, but I think it's great that you say that you are intentional about reaching out to other women to either be their mentor or mentee. Angela, can you uh, share with us a little bit about yourself and what has brought you to this conversation? Yeah, so uh, as I was listening to Erin, I thought about, you know, a couple of things that she said that really resonated with me, and that is uh, having a, you know, she called a kitchen cabinet, I call a personal board of directors uh, that I can reach out as advisors uh, along my uh, career path. And what I found is that over time, those folks who were, you know, in positions of being my supervisors, if you will, actually became my mentors over time. And, uh, and I think that how that happens is that uh, they understand how you work, 
what motivates you and what your values are. And where there's an alignment with the values, uh, it, it tends to lead into uh, mentor type relationships. And so these are folks who you can trust, right? You built that, that, um, that trust in the relationship and it is a relationship. It's not you know, a transactional conversation here or there. And even when you are perhaps just describing a particular situation that you're grappling with, what you find is those in the mentor role are really listening and looking for ways to help you navigate those situations because they know you, right? And so they're, they're likely to step back and say, well, have you considered or have you thought about or they might even give you tools to utilize as you try to make your decisions about what actions to take. And, and, and different mentors serve different purposes, quite frankly. Uh, but that's why it's helpful to have that, that group that um, you can really tap into. And sometimes you don't even realize that they're listening in the way that they are as you describe a situation. And you get to the end of it and they're like, well, have you considered? And you thought, well, here you go again, right? You're always thinking about ways to really be supportive, right? Understanding uh, what we're trying to accomplish. So that piece really resonated. But I would also say that for folks who are seeking to even involve themselves in uh, an organization's mentoring program, that what might be key as you look to build those first relationships, it's trying to define for yourself what you would be seeking out of that type of partnership. Uh, sometimes, you know, folks get, get uh, you know, pulled together in a mentor-mentee uh, partnership, but it's not really clear what the mentor is there to support. Yeah. So really thinking through what am I trying to accomplish? What are my goals? Are they professional? Is it a combination of balancing our professional, you know, work lives with our personal lives, which can be incredibly challenging, particularly right now. So those are some of the things that, you know, folks might want to consider as they think about, is having a mentor right for me? And consider how these should ideally really represent some long-term uh, partnerships over time. So just a couple of thoughts there. So Angela, you talked about if you're looking for a mentor, the goals, what are some things um, to consider if you are thinking about becoming a mentor to someone? Ah, very important. So I think in, in, talk, in thinking about becoming a mentor, I would consider what are you willing and able to give? And that is in terms of professional guidance, sharing some uh, pitfalls, challenges, and ways that you have been able to negotiate that. Or, and I think that when you decide to be a mentor, you're really opening your, yourself up to a, a new relationship. And so how do you uh, start to develop that? How do you establish trust? Do I have the time to dedicate to that partnership? In some cases, you really have the de desire but simply don't have the time. I think being honest about that. So if you're approached to be a mentor, be very clear as to whether or not you have the time to dedicate to that, that relationship. And if not, what you might be able to do short of being a full-fledged mentor. You may just be an informal contact as needed. Uh, but if you decide to be a mentor, make sure that when you talk to that mentee, you help to draw out what are they seeking and being honest with yourself, can I do that? Can I provide that type of guidance? Mm -hmm. Am I positioned to do that at this point? And if I can, you know, being willing to, you know, jump in there and really support. Thanks. And Dana, if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about yourself and, and your experiences, either as a mentor or as a mentee or both. Absolutely. So um, I, I'm actually in the field of accounting and finance, which I've been in my entire career. And I started out corporate America and to Aaron's point, right? It's male dominated mm -hmm. and you just oftentimes don't know how to ask for help when mm -hmm. you need help. And so um, in, in corporate America, I decided I wanted to do my own thing. So I began to, I started my own business whereas I'm able to help individuals and small businesses along the way. But my experience is also a little bit different, right? Um, for me, my first mentor was also a male, but he, it was my father because he was an accountant. And for me, my experience was I was reluctant, right? I was reluctant to, to mentorship. 
And mm -hmm. even though along the way, there were people who, who saw me and saw something in me and they wanted to mentor me, but I believe for me, I lacked the courage to be able to ask for help. Mm -hmm. So I think oftentimes that the, the importance of mentorship gets lost right? Especially if you begin to work in your career and you begin to, you know, work yourself, you work, you work your way up, right? And you decide that you want help, but you don't know how to ask for help. That also becomes a stumbling block and or a roadblock. And for me, I really didn't have a mentor outside of my father until later in my career, right? Because again, the lack, lacking the courage to ask for help. And it wasn't until I found myself in a situation where there was no one who looked like me, right? And I mean, not only just a, a woman, right? As well, because it's a male dominated industry, I found myself in a situation where I began to advance. And I actually had someone say to me, you know, you're advancing because there are not many women in the roles that you're seeking. And so it was at that point I decided I needed, I needed some assistance, I needed some advice, and I began to seek mentorship. Still doing it afraid, right? Asking blindly and mentoring blindly, but that is pretty much my experience. And, and it is very important. It's very important because even in a male-dominated industry, representation matters, right? Mm -hmm. Because you want to be able to have the confidence to reach out, to ask someone to assist you. And you don't realize that there are people who have been in your shoes and have overcome the challenges that, that you are facing and you need to be able to tap into that. So you need to surround yourself with others who are able to assist you along the way. And many times you run into people where you find the confidence to ask them and they don't have the time to dedicate to you. But you have to understand that and you have to continue to seek what you need in order to continue to develop and progress along the way. Because if you know where you need to be and you don't have an understanding of how to get there, you have to seek help. You have to be able to, to come out of your shell and to be able to ask for help. Because if you don't, you will not only stunt your growth, you, you can stunt your growth professionally and personally. You mm -hmm. really can. You need to be able to ask for help. Mm -hmm. So you talk about asking for help um, and you talk about the courage that it takes to ask for that help. How would you, you know, what gave you that courage and what can you all, each of you share with others who may be struggling about how to ask for help? Who do you go to? Um, what advice would you would you share? What, what can you share from your experience that helped you? Each for me, you? what led me to ask for help, my back was against the wall. Mm. It really was. I was in a, in a position where I didn't know where to turn. I knew that I had challenges and I, I, I knew that I needed to seek help. So I needed to figure out, I, I really took a step back and I tried to understand who I admired enough to be able to open myself up to, mm. right? Who, who, who could I call that I knew that I was able to have those difficult conversations to, to, get them to have a full understanding of what I was going through and maybe they could offer something to me to assist me in a situation. So, I mean, my back was against the wall and I needed help. So I had to figure out who I was willing to be vulnerable with. Okay. And Manifa, I just wanna you know, kind of piggyback on what Dana just said, because I think that it is so important to understand that not everyone has your best interest at heart. And so really trying to figure out who, when you really need someone to talk to, who you can talk to and trust can be very difficult, right, to navigate, especially when you might be the one, the only, you know, in a sea of others that don't look like you. So how do you figure out, okay, who can I really start to share what I'm dealing with in earnest and get some really helpful advice and support? And I think that can be one of the more, more difficult challenges, to be honest with you. It, and not all mentoring or relationships are created equal in my mind. You know, you might have someone who can make, maybe help you in the moment, but there might be also reluctance because they don't want you to get too far ahead of them. You know, so you're, you're really, and that's the reality of <laughs> thing. Well, that's the reality I have experienced. Uh, so not everyone is there to be supportive. They might present in that manner but it can be very challenging. And those mentor-mentee relationships should be, you know, once, and that's why I said trust is really key 
Because when you feel like you can trust that person, then you can be more open to share what's really happening in order to get through something that can be very difficult. I couldn't agree more, Angela. You know, I think there are just like any relationship in your life, you, there are times that, you know, some are, what is that saying? It's something like a, a reason, a season and a lifetime, right? So there are some mentor relationships that are just for that reason. And there's some that are for a season and there's some that are a lifetime. And I've had mentors that have been with me most of my career. Um, and then I have some that because there does come a point where and it's, it's just the human side of it, right, where you have to be really thoughtful around uh, it, it needs to be a safe space because it is about vulnerability. Um, and things that you're talking about can be uh, are very sensitive, especially when you're talking about professional uh, and so they can impact your career. So you need to have someone that you can trust. And I have been somebody who has had mentors who have violated that trust, right, and hit, or who have used information um, against me. But I also think that was a learning experience, too, because there's a certain point that you realize you can be a threat to your own mentor, right? Because if you're in the same industry or what have you. Um, but I think it's just like I was saying, any, any relationship that you have, you know, as you level up, you have to level up your personal board of advisors. I really like, you know, that terminology that Angela used. Um, and I think for me, when I have, uh, I've tapped into that, those relationships, uh, I think, you know, Dana talked about when your back is up against the wall. And I think that's a, that's one time, right? Like that's an example of when that's happened for me, because you want to be able to have someone who can advise you from a non-emotional perspective because when you're in things sometimes it's really hard for you to see clearly because you are feeling everything right if you're in a difficult situation so you want someone to be able uh to 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 diffuse that thinking with like okay let me just look at the facts and the information that i have um but i also when there's certain thing conversations that i think are specifically very uh, touchy subjects, I'm always very clear to set the tone of that conversation by saying, okay, so this is a confidential conversation I'm having with you, right? And I'm, I'm sharing this with you. And I, and I put the accountability on them that I'm creating a, a safe space. And that is my understanding that if I create this space, that they're going to honor that. Um, the other thing that I would say is like, that's, that's one, those are one situation, you know, or that's one type of situation. I tap into my personal board of advisors also when I'm thinking, when it's, it's not necessarily there's a problem. Sometimes I'm thinking about what might be the best career move for me because some, there are, there are gifts and talents within you that sometimes are really hard for you to see, but it's really easy for others to see. And so when I want to think about that, I, you know, I talk to those individuals and say, okay, I'm thinking about this, but where do you think I'd be best served? I personally believe in a purpose-driven life and uh, really serving that purpose in that direction. And there are ways uh, that I'd like to activate so that I am doing my part to make the world a better place. Um, and sometimes it's hard to, to see that and where I can best fit in. But I think the, those mentors that I've had have shared organizations with me that I probably would have never considered uh, in, in roles and opportunities. Um, I, at some point or another, you know, jumped from being in the, the private sector into the public sector which was a huge career shift for me. I'd never thought about working in government. I'd never thought about working in policy uh, or economic development, but it was much more aligned with who I was in a very authentic way than what I was getting in the private sector, right? Um, it doesn't mean that you can't do good work in the private sector. I think one of the great things that has happened uh, in the last two years, the silver lining of the last two years, uh, is the are where companies are now really reevaluating uh, some of the type of roles that exist and the type of work that they're doing. So, for example, you know, um, there's so many major corporations now that have social impact roles that didn't exist before, 
You know what I mean? So I feel like there's more space there if that if that's something that's important to you. But I think when you're thinking around around career moves and and um, and big decisions in life, this is where you really tap into those that that have shown that they actually care about you and they care about. And, and I just am a firm believer of believe people when they show you who who they are. Right. And I think Angela talked about um, having a manager that really showed an interest. Right. So if they've shown that they're about your upward mobility, that they've been your advocate, uh, you know, that's that's a good place to start. But I also, you know, I have found mentors at events that I saw them speaking and something that they said really resonated with me. And as an example, one of my longstanding mentors um, was when I entered grad school, uh, he was transitioning between jobs and he was speaking at an event announcing his big transition uh, from a nonprofit to a trade association to become uh, their new CEO. But the things that he was talking about really resonated with me. And I just went up to him, you know, after uh, he spoke and said, you know, I, I, the words that you said really resonated with me. And I, I'm, you know, interested. And I think this Angela brought this up about being clear about your ask. And I'm always very clear. So I, you know, I, I didn't just say, hey, would you be my mentor? I said, I'm really interested in your mentorship. And would you be open to considering a, a monthly or bi-monthly or even quarterly check-in with me um, just to get to know me to, and see if this is a good fit? And he said, yes, he has become the strongest advocate for me. He's the godfather of my children. There, it's a relationship that I lean on in, it, extensively, but it isn't just the professional part. It's actually, for me, he's become very much a an advisor from a standpoint of uh, a moral compass because he gives me phrases that I, I that that resonate with me. Like he'll say, and we talk about making decisions. He'll say, you know, you got to take a moment, take a step back, and think about: Are you doing the right thing for the right reasons? That phrase alone, like, resonates for me personally, professionally, everything was like, am I doing, and I do, I take a step back and say, am I doing the right thing for the right reasons? Do I stand by this? You know, and those kind of things, um, you know, I, I call, you know, he, he, his name is Ray. And so I call him Rayisms. Those I had, I used to literally write down all of these Rayisms because it could be a book within themselves that just be have become guiding principles in my life and really shaped who I am um, as a person, like I said, not just professionally, but personally as well. And I think to both Erin's and Angela's points, right? Sometimes you don't have to ask, right? You There are often situations where you, you see someone and you have to ask, but oftentimes people are invested in you. They invest in you because they see something in you and you know they're able to pull something out of you, right? And so I think for me, mentors, having a mentor, they, they allow you to see a different perspective. And they sometimes stretch you to your limits. And even though you, you may feel uncomfortable, they're doing it because they see something in you, right? And I, and I believe I am where I am today because one of my mentors said to me, your success should be tied to the, su the success of others, right? And so most of what I do is helping others succeed is because that's something that I have a passion for, something that I'm passionate about, right? And so... Just, I, you know, I can't, I can't stress enough. Don't be afraid. And even if you, even if it's not in terms of asking for assistance, don't be afraid. If someone sees something in you, don't be reluctant. Try not to be reluctant and just allow it to happen organically. Because most of my, my mentors, I've just allowed the relationship to develop organically because they've seen something in me and they want to push me to my limits. So we, you know, I've heard and it resonates with me when I hear Aaron talk about um, developing and having relationships with, with your mentors beyond that of the corporate world or the professional world where it develops, as you said, Dana, organically. Um, and you, you talk about your rayisms and the other pearls of wisdom that have come to you over time. Um, what are some of those I will call them pearls of wisdoms, nuggets, um, takeaways that you all have, eat, someone has shared with you that you, if you could only carry that in your little purse 
of knowledge. And whether that's a change purse, man purse, whatever kind of purse you have, what would one of those nuggets be? I'm interested in hearing that. And if you could share that with everyone else. Well, I shared the the uh, do the right thing for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm trying to think of ones that off the top of my head because I quote I quote those all the time and just you know I have my own right. So um, that I'll give one that um, I didn't even know that I would say, but um, I was mentoring someone and she's like, it's like you always say, and I'm like, what do I always say, right? <laughs> so she said, be patient with your process. And I'm like, that's a good one. I'm gonna have to write that down. I didn't even realize that I said it. But um, I think that's a pearl of wisdom that I talk a lot about because I think people get so frustrated with where they are. You know, the good and bad in life is what shapes you for your purpose, right? So it's not, it's not always when you have a promotion or when things are great. It is these, these. Um, it's the difficult, it is just as much the difficult times in life that really become your testimony uh, that help you really realize where you should be in the world, where you fit. And you never know um, who is watching that testimony in action, right? It's not just the people you tell about, but it's the people that that hear about it from there. I mean, I've had situations where people have come up to me and shared something that they heard I did in my life that really influenced them that I had no idea that was even impacting them whatsoever. Um, and I'll just give a quick example. Um, when I when the recession in the mid 2000s hit, um, I went from being a and this is where kind of the shift from the private sector to the to the public sector came along i went from being a six-figure advertising executive to being laid off i was recently divorced i had little kids and both under the age of five and had to quickly pivot my skill set and um, i was in the bay area and had to go back to grad but lost my job. And so I had to pack my car and my kids in my car and drive from California to DC by myself, uh, which was a, a, you know, was almost a drive, uh, a drive that took a week. And, um, and I had documented some of on, this is like 2009. So this is fairly early days of, of social media and Facebook, but I had documented some of it of that drive along, you know, things that we saw along the way. And every time we stopped, we, we passed a, a state and um, took a picture. And years later, a woman came to me and said, she said, you know, I used to be really scared of long distance driving, uh, but I had something that happened that I really, I had to, to drive from DC to Detroit. And I said to myself, if Erin could make that drive with two little kids by herself, I, I can make a, a, a much shorter drive to Detroit. So my point in that is just, you know, being being patient with your process in that testimony. I know that's not pearls of wisdom, but it kind of is in a way. Um, and I think the other, one of the things that, um, one of the pearls of wisdom from a mentor of mine that I think that I hold very near and dear to me um, is especially as a, as a, uh, a woman, because we're talking about female leadership, is around embracing your feminine feminine side mm -hmm. um and i it, that doesn't sound like it's a really big term but it actually is because i think especially in the professional space we are pushed oftentimes to take on uh what are considered male qualities and and male dominated qualities to be better business people but i think the things that make us who we are whatever considered feminine qualities are um, also are what are what's our power right and so leaning into that feminine power so for me as an example i was just coaching uh, one of my employees yesterday around you know the emotional side of who you are which sometimes as women can be negated when people say don't be emotional or whatever that's also that emotional intelligence is part of who you are it makes you much more in tune with a lot of things so that leaning into your 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 feminine uh skill, skills um is not something i think that it's something that should be embraced and not pushed down and muted is there anyone in the uh, I'm hoping that there is there are some people who are listening, some of our participants who would and could share some of their own pearls of wisdom that they maybe they've received from 
a mentor, they've heard from themselves, you know, use themselves and would like to share with us. So one of the things that I know that I've heard um, and I didn't realize until, like you said, Erin, um, someone said you say that a lot is just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. Um, and so I've used that as a moral compass for myself. Um, it, just because I can do it, just because it's legal, doesn't mean that you should. Is it the right thing to do? So can someone else share with me some of the things that they've heard? Monifa, I'll hop in. Um, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Katie Toomey. I work at Center State, um, and I'm the executive director of the Greater Oswego Fulton Chamber. I have found <clears throat> that I've had to, you know, I, for a while I was approaching things as, as someone, as I was, like that I was looking for help. But for me, it, it became increasingly easier to ask for help if I reframed it and looked for advice. So that was an, that made it easier for me mentally, I think. Um, but one thing I had have heard from every single mentor I've ever had, all women, um, was a reminder that it, you can be kind and you don't have to be nice. You don't have to be sweet saccharine. You, you, you can be kind and be effective and, and efficient and the reminder that the higher you go up in your career, so it becomes more challenging at times um, and that, that it can feel lonely. So you just have to rely on that, that group of people that you, um, you know, your, your bench, your team um, to make you feel better and uh, seek that advice. So kind of stating the obvious, but I'm very grateful for the mentors in my life and that they've been a safe place for me so far. <laughs> and I think it's important to say that if, if you don't want to share it out loud, feel free to put it in the chat yes. too, um, because I think there's a lot of great pearls that people share. And it doesn't have to be even from a mentor. I think that there are, um, you know, like I shared one earlier, a pearl of wisdom that, um, that has been said to me in different ways, but I think it is really true. Um, is believe people when, when they show you who they are, right? That's been very powerful in my career um, to really help me think about, you know, if somebody shows up in a certain type of way, that is who they are. And you, you'll be surprised how much it comes back into, you know, and plays a role in, in, in uh, how they treat you, you know? Um, and I think paying attention to how people treat others, not just you, right? Like if it's the, if you're going to a, a dinner and how they treat the wait staff or how they, um, you know, interact with the, if you're, you're, you're in a place of business and you see how they treat the receptionist, that says a lot about a person. Um, and those are things that, you know, if, if if that was me, and I, I'm somebody who believes that everybody should be treated equally. Everybody, ha if I go into an organization, um, I make sure that I get to know everyone in there, right? Because they all have a perspective that is very powerful. That receptionist sees a lot of things, okay? That receptionist knows that organization from the, as they say in the South, from the rooter to the tutor, right? <laughs> so they know everything. Thing. And, and honestly, the receptionists, every place that I've worked, have always become some of the closest people and clo closest confidants because people act like they're invisible and they have like really important conversations right there in front of a receptionist and, uh, you know, and, and really discount them as 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 their you know and their talents and gifts i mean there's how many people took a receptionist job while they were in school or while they were trying to transition or whatever i know i've taken roles uh you know when when i was starting my entrepreneurial career people didn't know my professional background but you know i worked at the mac counter selling makeup in my early 20s because just for fun it, honestly while i was while i was starting you know my own marketing communications firm and people would say things to me or talk to me in a very disrespectful way 
and I'm and, and not and discount who I was as a person. And even as I shared earlier, you know, that part about like when I've had these transitions in my life, it, it, part of the reason I do the work that I do is going from being an executive to, you know, losing a job and being on social services and, and getting, you know, food stamps and unemployment checks. I realized how different people treated people in the world based on status who they thought you were um and that really resonated with me that to try to be a voice for those who don't have a voice and that really you know in the work that i do each and every day i think about you know there are a number of people's lives who are being impacted by the work that i do who will never know my name never you know know uh what i do for a living but literally i've helped change the uh generational uh, an economic trajectory of their family, right? And but it's the same. I mean, I just think that kind of is 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 a, a a rule of thumb. I think about just in general that around everyone. I don't care if you're walking down the street and you see someone who is homeless, acknowledge that person as a person and as a human being. I respect and admire all of you as mentors and leaders. It's great to hear everyone's story and where they started. And just to kind of speak to that a little bit, I was always. Um, you know, in a professional setting. And at one point I decided to stay at home with my kids and what happened for one year turned into two years. And, you know, all of a sudden they got a little older and I decided to step back into um, a professional setting. And I felt insecure in the beginning. You know, everyone's like, well, what have you been doing? And I'm with all these strong women and strong people. So one of the best pieces of advice that I received actually from Katie was um, find some mentors, find some women and some professionals that you like for whatever reason, that they're standing out to you either at a meeting or in the community. And in doing so, I found two or three people um, who are now, who have always been my peers, you know, but I always consider them above me, who now are great friends of mine, peers of mine, just like we're speaking of. And it's funny over time, you find the confidence in that mentorship that all of a sudden I'm getting emails hey, would you like to mentor me? Would you like to meet for lunch? So I think just seeing the evolution of it and finding the confidence in that and just, you know, the whole networking of it is so special to me and has really helped me find such a voice and such a strength and so much more confidence. And I also think it's small things that women can do and professionals can do. If you have an extra ticket to a big event where this person can be elevated, bring them. If there's an extra seat at the table, you know, just look for every opportunity to elevate these people and let them network and, and rise to, to their occasion. So in my career, that's what I have found over the past almost five years has been really helpful and, you know, just something that I take a lot of pride in between learning everything that I've learned and now becoming a mentor to people and sitting on different boards and finding opportunities for others. It's just really, really important. So Thank you all for for doing this. It's, it's very impactful. Those are beautiful words, Sarah. That actually made me think of something too, because I think courage and, and confidence um, are some really powerful attributes that people, I think, naturally lean to mentors for. And um, another pearl of wisdom that that made me think of is part of actually how I identified um, that individual to be my mentor is because I had was shifting careers, right? And I went to go speak at a conference for the first time in this kind of in, in a whole different industry and, and after grad school. And I had complete stage fright um, while I was talking. And so I was asking him about how to how to get over that stage fright. Like I've always been a confident speaker, but I, you know, I couldn't understand why. But I realized it was because. I was discounting myself as kind of a new subject matter expert in a space where before I felt very confident in it, but now, you know, shifting gears and, and becoming, you know, uh, you know, a fledgling like academic in this, this new area of, in that, in that situation was telecom policy. But so I went from being an advertising executive to telecom policy, completely different fields in a lot of ways. But one thing that he said that resonate, re resonated with me that I share when I mentor is that he said, you know, when I go into situations, I don't prepare speeches and I don't do all of that because I am the subject matter expert, right? If 
uh, if somebody has invited you to a space to speak, it's because you are the authority, right? You're the one. So they would, they just want to hear what you think. And so you shouldn't have to prepare a whole speech for that because it should be what you, what naturally comes to you. Not, not saying that you should prepare notes and talking points, people. I'm just saying that when you're in these spaces, you know, you can step into it confidently because you are the subject matter expert. You are the authority. People want to hear from you. And the more you lean into to that authentically, um, so the, what you hear, and I know it, it, it can sometimes seem long-winded when I share a testimony, but I've realized that testimony it, and that that authentic version of myself is what people actually want to hear, not hiding that, not muting that part of it, because I, you know, I don't know who needs to hear that story to help them find the confidence to get them to do what they need to do and, and serve out their purpose. So I just think, you know, reminding you that when you step into roles and step into places and spaces, do that confidently because you're called to do it for a reason. And in finding your confidence, remember your why right? That's huge for me. Remember your why. And then the other piece to it that someone told me way back when, when I felt intimidated to step into rooms to, to have a seat at the table was remove the titles, right? Remove the titles of those that you are sitting at the table with, because at the end of the day, they're really just people, mm -hmm. right? And so have, have confidence in yourself that you deserve the seat at the table, or you, you deserve to be in that room, or you, would, you were asked to be there for a specific reason. Because again, someone saw something in you that maybe you didn't see in yourself, but you are the subject matter expert because, you know, and speak from your heart. To Aaron's point, you know, prepare talking points, but speak from your heart and authentically be you and do it with intention. Yeah, and I would add to that, it's important to understand the journey. And I think that when you, you know, identify or think about a mentor, Think about their journey. And, you know, we might be sitting before you today and having this wonderful opportunity to share, you know, some things that we've experienced. But, you know, for me, the journey was not a straight line. It was zigzags, right? It was up and down and back and forth. And you tried this and, and this and that and the other. But having people that, you know, as we said earlier, have your best interests at heart that you can say, you know, I need to make a change. You know, maybe this is not working or you're looking for, well, I, I'm here now, but maybe I want to be over there. How do I get there? So then you start to look for people who are leading by example. You know, that person represents a place where I want to be or a, a person that I want to be as I work with others. So I want to kind of talk to them and, and figure out how they got there. What are the same things that they're doing? And you might find that people have you know, Erin uh, talked about her process. People tend to have processes and maybe they haven't lined out, put on paper, but it's the way that they approach their work and, and what they do and how they do it. I remember coming up, you know, many years ago and I was so fearful of public speaking that I found it paralyzing. But I also felt that in order to get to that next level in my career, I had to figure this out. So I really started to look at public speakers that resonated with me, like how they presented, what they presented, how they told their story. And I started to really look at, can I do that? Can I be that? And I found a mentor who was just phenomenal at this. She would do it effortlessly. And at first I kind of watched her for a while, working up the nerve at that point in my career to say, hey, would you mind helping me out with this? Because like, I find it paralyzed, but I knew in order to, again, advance in my career, I had to get beyond it. And she helped me. But I will say that it was the way that she didn't tell me exactly how to do it. I can tell you today, she did not write out, here's what you need to do. It was just kind of being there, being a part of what I was doing and saying, well, well, here, you really want to think about what your message is. Not that people are looking at you, but what is the message? What is your purpose? Getting back to what Dana said, know your purpose. And that really helps to start to paint that picture of the what and the how. So I would just really, you know, think about that as well. I know it's not a pearl of wisdom per se, 
but it, it's a roadmap as to how we can really get there. I think it is a pearl of wisdom because at the end of the day, you know, when I talk to mentors or even uh, uh, when I was being mentored or even when I mentor others, um, I think what you're talking about that journey is really important because um, I don't just about their professional journey. I asked them about their personal journey. I had, a, and, and let me tell you something, it leads to amazing things. I'll give you another, cause I like my, I think stories really help, right? <laughs> Length. But there was, um, there was a, a woman who uh, I connected with, who was one of the first like CEOs in uh, black female CEOs in tech. And through her daughter, her daughter connected me. And this is a uh, late, 2019. I just happened to be in the Bay Area and reached out to her and she's like, oh, you know what? I had a cancellation. Let's go to dinner. Never met the woman in my life. But I said, just tell me your story. I, I would love to hear like how you got from here to here. I, I do this even when I meet my staff. I do a getting to know you coffee. Like, tell me from where you were born all the way till now, like, tell me that story. Cause that's, it's, you find so much out around those journeys, right? And those obstacles and how they overcame it. Anyway, she starts sharing her story. And what I learned is that her husband, who she'd been uh, with since she was in college, just passed away months before from cancer. And she got emotional when she talked about it and how he, you know, part of his, in his passing, he, he left her funding to, to go follow her dreams and passions around certain travel that she wanted to do. And so she was going with some small group of friends to go to Alabama to visit the uh, EJI Equal Justice Institute where there's, there's the uh, lynching uh, memorial and the the uh, slavery to, uh, to mass incarceration museum and things like that. And I was like, wow, that sounds so amazing. Like, I'm so sorry to hear about your husband, but I think it's so healthy, like how you're you're processing that, right? And I was like, I, I've, I've been actually thinking about going and visiting that same place. And she said, you should come. And I ended up going with her and I did not know, the, and it was like two, not even two months later, her and uh, four or five other women who were all um, highly accomplished women. One was a, a uh, Oprah um, uh, book, um, what is that called? A book club author, right? And then the rest of them were all like on corporate boards. I was like the baby of the group. And I was like in all triple my having this really interesting uh, experience going through, you know, these mediums and things like that. But I'm also around, like at dinner, talking about their corporate board seats and how they got there and, and just taking, right? And it just is because I asked about her as a she felt connected enough to her personal experience. And that those journeys, like those are very many gems in people telling their journey testimony and their process that I, you know, I just think that that's probably one of the most valuable things that you can get out of the tour. Not, not just the, um, all of the, the professional advice, but just learning how they got through these obstacles in life. So I, I asked um, if people could share with me a time or share with everyone else a time that someone extended an extra ticket to you and how that made you feel. Um, this would be an opportunity. I'm asking you, please share that with us. Encourage us with your experience. So Moni, if I was just about to type this into the <clears throat> chat, I, I didn't so much get my first big break by getting, being handed the extra ticket, but I was, <laughs> it was more like I was handed the keys to the car. Um, when I was right around like 24, 25, I worked at Fujifilm and the communications department and uh, my boss went on maternity leave. So I was probably there for a solid year. And I found myself a very junior staffer being handed, you know, three months of trade shows and press relations and 
dealing with executives and C-suite level um, folks and, and also, of course, um, expats to boot, uh, mm -hmm. learning some different cultural uh, or learning cultural differences and what have you. And at first, <laughs> um, it was a little terrifying finding out that I was going to be doing that by myself. And, and uh, but, you know, it, it was also the most empowering, flattering and exciting thing that had happened to me that to that point. So um, I've always tried to hand the keys over to my junior staffers, bring bring them along first, bring them on the ride, and then hand over the keys. Um, so that, that, that made me feel great. It was very empowering for me. So as we are, have been talking about mentorship, um, we've, I've heard about it from your personal experience, from your professional experience. How do we think mentorship ties and plays in with DEI, diversity and inclusion? Um, do you think that's a component of it? And if so, how so? Well, I'll start and, and just say that um, it really helps to expand the thinking and diversity, equity, and inclusion. That inclusion piece is critical. So it's one thing to have representation organizations, but it's another for folks to feel valued and included and that their ideas are welcome and wanted and in fact required in order for their organization to grow. And I think that mentoring provides another avenue for individuals to feel included in a part of a larger organization. Someone is there to help me through various situations. They wanna see that I, I gain success, that I have opportunities going forward and is really looking out for me. Right, they have a sense of where I'm trying to get to, and that they can be a part of that journey. You know, we were just talking about the journey, and that you know, it's over time. It's not like a one shot deal. And I think mentoring helps create that relationship. Right, there's someone else here in this organization that has a vested interest in my success, and with that success, it only yields to further success for their organization. So I think it is it is key, and. It, it's a real good opportunity when organizations have formalized mentoring programs, because what that organization is saying is that we want the best of you. And because of that, we want to make sure we provide many different avenues for your success. And mentoring is just one of those. And for those uh, in leadership position, positions or in management positions who are taking the time to be mentors, you know, they're also, it's their way of giving back to that organization, right? They've, they've reached a level of success and they want to ensure that they, they bring, they, you know, move that forward. I really like what Dana said earlier about, you know, leading with a purpose in life, right? So uh, being a professional, being a part of an organization is not just about me individually, it's about us and we and what we're trying to accomplish. And I just think mentoring plays such an important role in that, and that it really hits on that point of ensuring that all folks within that organization have that opportunity to succeed. And mentoring really does, uh, I think, meet that purpose in a really significant way. And as we were talking, you can really develop long-term, long-standing relationships over time that benefit you know, your professional growth and opportunity. And one of the things that we have dealt with, particularly in the last couple of years, is trying to continue to strike that balance between work life and personal life. And I think it's probably gotten even more difficult for many of us, I know it has for me, uh, with the pandemic, right? Because there's almost a blurring of the lines, right? There's so much that we can still do, you know, where if we have the opportunity to work remotely, you know, you can do things almost at any point in time during the day, which means you can do things almost any point in time during the day, right? You can find yourself doing work when you may not have intended to do that, or you have some personal things that you really need to be attentive to. So striking that balance and being able to at least have a sounding board about what you're going through, through a mentor, I think is very helpful. One of the things I don't think we've talked about yet is I found that mentors, even in my background, have helped me to see my blind spots. Because sometimes you can have very narrow, a narrow vision or a narrow view. 
a mentor has that ability to be a little bit more disconnected from the situation, especially emotionally. And they can see some of the things that you may not be able to see and help you navigate through that. So when we talked earlier about the importance of them listening and maybe hear you say things that you don't even realize you're saying, they can then point those out and help you to address those as well. So I do think it's very key. So I think when I started out in my early career, there were not many companies or organizations that had formal mentoring programs. Because I think if they did, I probably would have embraced the idea of mentoring sooner than I did. But I, you know, I began to mentor blindly, right? Because I did not seek out the mentorship and I was unwilling to allow others to mentor me, you know, because of what I was talked about earlier. So I began to mentor blindly and in mentoring, I determined what I wanted from a mentor, right? So that's how I was more so able to understand what it is I was looking for. And then when you talk about the DEI, it, it is very true, representation does not equal inclusion. Right. And so even though there may be representation, you may not always feel included. But another thing that was told to me early in my career was that you define what your life looks like personally and professionally. You have the ability to define that. You have the ability to break boundaries if you so choose. And so I believe that the DEI initiative needs to be something that's consistent. And I do know that more and more organizations and large companies are beginning to embrace it, but it's got to be consistent. It can't be that they accept the initiative now and decide to move forward with it and then it stops because it is important. It is an, it, it is an important aspect of mentoring, of being able to open yourself up to the idea of mentoring, of being able to define what you want to see or what you want to do when you begin to mentor. And so, yeah, I do believe you know, it is, it's very important. Good morning. Um, my name is Renee Frazier, and I have um, uh, a, a, a firm that now does strategy, but to the point of mentorship, it was actually my mentor that, that saw that blind spot in me to say, you keep calling yourself a marketing person, but the, when I hear you talk, you're more of a strategist and you, uh, and your work is in the operational space. And so it's, it was really important to um, to listen to my mentor in that way to for the blind spots to to help kind of guide and guard my career. Uh, so that was very very eye opening that I you know that I just didn't think of myself in certain ways. And when you do have a mentor, they they can see more than than the sum of the pieces. I did learn from um, from one mentor to be intentional about the mentoring. So trying to aim for say, you know, a black woman, a white woman, uh, a Latino, uh, you know, someone in, uh, like you were saying in private and someone in public, someone geographically to kind of mix it up with your mentoring so that you can have a depth and breadth of those mentors has been really helpful to me. I would add from a, a I'm gonna try to do this with my camera on and see if it works. Um, so let me know in the chat if it comes off choppy again. But I think that, when we look at diversity, equity, and inclusion, and access, right, that um, mentorship is really critical um, because I think it, it, one, gives people, people see you represent a lot of things. It's not just about gender. It's not just about ethnicity. It can sometimes be about age. It can be about experience. It can be about ability. It can be a number of different things. And, and I think that that has, um, there's, there are a number of people that have come to me who my role or what I'm doing has given people permission in their life to kind of stand up more in their truth and given them the courage and confidence to, because my, my path is so nonlinear, right? And I think that, I think really all of our paths are nonlinear. Um, you know, one of the things I give, you know, advice I give mentees because people talk about making their plans. I had a whole bunch of five year, 10 year plans and they're great. I think that there are phenomenal, uh, it's a phenomenal way to um, create intentions, right? and put yourself on a path, but you need to be 
flexible and open to what happens in life because life happens despite all of your best laid plans, right? And I think that that me sharing those experiences and bringing that humanness and personal touch to uh, to those conversations really makes people really think about what they were taught and then also really lean into what they know, right? What you know is, is that what you kind of back to what I said earlier about believing people and things. <laughs> when you see this, is that life doesn't always go the way that you think it's going to go. And um, there are people that, um, that, you know, and one other thing I'll say just for, for, for me personally is the last, uh, almost the last three or four jobs that I have had, um, except for just one, um, were newly created roles. They didn't exist before, right? And the reason that's important is the, uh, and even one of them had the title of inclusion in it, right? I was a managing partner of inclusion for a venture firm, but they were roles that didn't exist. And it's because either people created roles based on me and what they thought that I could bring to the table and shape, or because they were trying to create something and they needed somebody who was not scared to, to try something new and step into a new space. Um, and I think that inclusion uh, of me in those roles really changed the game for those organizations and also the, the organizations uh, the, that the influence of that organization to larger organizations. And I just, I just want, you know, I, I say that because we all have power, right? And words have power. So even, you know, I've been very intentional when, when I get a new role is around, you know, being really clear about the name of it. It's not so much the, the title, but some of the words and intentions in that title are very powerful. I think that, you know, another pearl of wisdom that I've got through the years, um, from different mentors and others is just the power of words, you know, and, and owning that, like you can speak power into people's lives with words. You can tear people down with your words and knowing your own power and exercising that power is really important. And so I think even, you know, as we look at the DEI initiatives and efforts, um, realizing the power in them and how important it is to to show up authentically. I don't join organizations or stay with organizations if I don't think they're uh, authentically and intentionally doing that work. I'm not here to be a token. I'm not here to be a um, figurehead. I'm, I'm legitimately and, and authentically about this work and aligning, you own, stepping into my power. I know that if I, if I align myself with an organization, that I'm lending my social capital and my professional capital to that organization. Um, and so I'm very thoughtful around that and how that shows up. As we talk about um, mentoring programs and organizations and how we embrace those organizations, um, just wondering if people in the audience can share if their organization has a mentorship program and what that looks like. You could share, you know, some of the points about what, if you have that, what has made it su successful, what are some pitfalls, some potential areas that we should look out for if we're interested in creating a mentorship program within our own organizations. Well, this is Renee again. I just wanted to say that was very important for me as even a micro business to, uh, to garner internships for individuals. And so it's a different form of a uh, mentorship, but you know, anyone who has had a, a, a smaller organization knows just how, how that role is magnified when there might only be three to five people in that company. But it just meant a lot to me to make sure that mentorship looked that specific way. And the mantra I used to use is that to, to be a place and a space for youth to know that they can apply to not just the Fortune 5000 company, but that there is a career path to deploy yourself in that might not look like what you know happens in your career centers. Good point. I think that often we don't consider an internship a form of mentorship, but it, 
I agree. Indeed is and is very important. And can I add to that just to say that it's never too late to be an intern? You know, I intern even now if there's something that I, if I want to learn something, I ask people, can I shadow you? Can I intern with you? And I'm a, you know, 40 plus year old woman. Um, but, I, you know, I was doing a, um, a fellowship at the top of the year in Hawaii and I met this woman who makes jewelry out of um, sea glass. And I just thought it was so interesting what she was doing. And I was like, can I just <laughs> hang out with you and like, like be like an apprentice? Like, are you okay with that? And she said, yes. So I have to take her up on it. But the point of it is, is I just don't want, you know, I don't think it's ever too late. And even for me, when I shifted careers, I became uh, a graduate intern, right? Or a graduate, had graduate assistantships. And it was a humbling place for me to kind of like shift from to back to be an intern, but I had to remind myself and give myself to my said they stopped learning by a certain age, you know, in an intern. So I just want that as well, because I think internships have been, internships are the way that are what have led me to some of. And I think in the chat, Carrie had to drop off, but she asked about, you know, how do you know, uh, that you have the chops to be a mentor. Everybody has a story. Everybody has talents and gifts that I think that they can share. There's no, I mean, I guess there is, there are programs that teach you to be a mentor, but I, I just think that there's no, um, if people are seeking that from you, there's something in you that people see that and admire um, that people want to uh, emulate. Right, and it's an opportunity for you to share your gift, and I think it happens in so many different ways. I think mentorship for me has not, a lot of my mentorship has not been um, either from mentors or people that I mentor uh, or I'm a mentor for have not been about professional. Right, it's because of other areas. I agree with Aaron that if you have been on a journey, <laughs> professional and personal, you have pearls of wisdom to share, you have experiences, you've had to uh, navigate situations. I think that we all can serve as a mentor in some form or capacity. Again, it's a relationship. So, you know, if a mentee says they're looking at something specific that you feel you really can't provide or doesn't resonate with your background, it's okay to say, you know, I really appreciate that, you know, you're reaching out to me. However, given what path you're on, I might not be the best person suited for that. I mean, that's okay too, um, you know, because not everything fits for everyone. But I do think that, you know, to Carrie's question, if she is uh, has a journey, has a story to share, has experiences that she's willing to be open and honest about, she probably would make a, an ideal mentor because mentors don't have all the answers. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about someone who's willing to help you work through situations provide some of their experiences, you know, understanding that some of what they share is really going to hit the mark. Others, you're going to say, well, you know, let me kind of think on that one a little bit. And that's okay. That's a part of that relationship, right? That give and take is not that, oh, my mentor said X, that means I have to do X. No, and, I, and most mentors don't even present it that way. It's a discussion. It's a conversation. It's like, well, let's kind of look at what you're dealing with. You know, let's kind of think through some of the approaches you might be able to take. Or, you know, maybe you do need more balance in your life. You know, how can we help you get that? What are some of the things that you can do? You know, I think Aaron talked earlier about the, uh, you, you know, the, um, you know, meditation and going to a retreat. I'm going to, you know, I think that Aaron just mentored me. I'm going to jot that down. I'm going to figure out what, you know, what that retreat is about because, you know, I didn't think of that. And sometimes you do just need to regroup. And I think people come into your life like mentors to help you through situations. Some of them stay around, right? It's a, could be a lifetime, could be a season that we talked about earlier. So I think what's important, even as we talk about mentorships, even those that are sponsored by organizations, there are really not hard and fast rules, but they're parameters, right? You wanna develop a sense of trust, 
camaraderie, interest in you as an individual, interest in supporting the organizational goals, things like that. And then you get down to those nitty gritty things about, okay, so when are we going to meet? How are we going to you know, regroup? What if I have a question that's not a part of our usual meeting schedule? Are you open to that? How flexible is our schedule? It's going, you know, so you can get into those kinds of things, but that's just a part of, you know, how you're going to engage, <clears throat> but how you build that relationship is really up to the two of you. And it should be mutually beneficial. And mentorship can take different forms, right? It's not always professional. And, and if you decide, you don't even have to decide to come, become a mentor. It can be that you have life experiences that you can share with others. It can be, you know, it's just, you, if you are giving of yourself and willing to share, like Aaron said, your talents and willing to share your life experiences, your professional experiences. And sometimes you, you, you have the answer, but you don't know you have the answer because you don't, you never know what your mentee is specifically looking for, but just have the conversations, whether they're tough conversations or not, you, you should just be able to just ensure them that even along the way, what your the gems that you are providing to them um, should be helpful. Again, mutually beneficial. And then the other piece that I always say is just make sure that you're taking care of yourself as well along the way, right? So you just have to make sure that you're doing what is true to you. Be true to yourself and share yourself with others if you're able to. And then, I mean, you can just, you become a mentor sometimes and don't know you're mentoring. Absolutely. I would, you know, I think that um, don't be scared to be human. It's really kind of like the, the mantra that I live by, right? And because there's that humanness is what builds trust with people. Um, and I think that that is, um, that transparency is what teaches people. Um, and I think we, you know, we're no longer in a space like we're, or a society where we cherish oral history the way that we used to, right? As human beings, before we could write, before we could do, um, have all these amazing languages, you know, people sat around and, and, and gave wisdom to one another. And the fact that that doesn't happen as much you know, anymore, like there's not spaces like when kids are, in, in some places there are, but you know, we're, we're, when kids are transitioning from being kids to adults, you know, there used to be these rites of passage, right? Where you pass down all these things, these, this sage advice that just, that's not what happens anymore. So we're missing critical steps um, as we evolve as human beings, right? And it's important that we seek that out, but that we also give that to others and help them navigate life a little bit smoother uh, and easier. I think that that's one of the things that we can all do to, to be better humans in this world is, is pass those pearls of wisdom to someone else to lift them up and bring them along um, and bring them behind us in the sense that, you know, let me make your path a little bit easier than my path and my journey. So, and to respect people's time, I just would like to take the time to say thank you to each of you. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Dana, for sharing your pearls of wisdom with us. Um, hopefully we will, we have something new to put in our kitchen cabinet and our add to our personal board of advisors. Um, and thank each of you for participating and taking this time with us. I thank you very much and hope you all have a wonderful day.